Okay, Algebra 2, here we are. We're back in Section A4. We're looking at ellipses, and we're only at Example 2. I hate to tell you this. I think we're going to have three parts. You probably already know that by now, but I'm still in the midst of making it, so I'm just speculating. All right, so let's talk about this problem. We're talking about this cool museum where if you sit at particular points in the museum, the foci of an ellipse, it's kind of an elliptical room, we recognize that you can like communicate, whisper to one from one person to another at the focal regions. And what we're given is the cross section of this room is going to be 13 feet, six inches by 47 feet, four inches. Now we're supposed to write an equation and assume that the major axis is horizontal. That tells me the longest side or the longest um, cross section will be on the horizontal axis. So the 47 feet, four inches, which we've turned into 568 inches, just because I thought it was easier, 568 inches would be right across this area here, okay? And then this 13 feet, six inches, which comes out to 162 inches altogether, would be this minor axis. And what I know is that my focal points, these two points where you can whisper back and forth from one another because all of the sound bounces and goes to the other focal point, will be here and here somewhere, right, on this axis. So we remember that if we're dealing with a horizontal parabola, the equation that we're using is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. How does that work out for us? Well, the fact is that we're centered at the origin, so the x squared, y squared is going to be exactly what we need. The a value is going to be the value. I've got like this a here, but really a refers to half the length of the major axis, where B refers to half the length of the minor axis. So I'm going to write it like that. A squared is uh, 284 squared, and I'm going to be lazy and actually not do that. Just write it like that for now. And B squared is going to be 81 squared. And then whatever those values are, I'll calculate them. Okay, so we got 80,656 and 6,561. 6, that would be the denominators. I know I could have done it in feet, but I thought the decimals were getting really kind of funky. Um, wouldn't be that big a deal, but these are in inches. And so this would be the equation that I would use to model that particular room. Now, the next part they ask us is how far apart are the points at which the two people should stand to hear the whisper. And so what we're talking about here is this distance here. And do you remember how all of these are related? We had it way back in the beginning of the first video. We talked about the relationship between the A value, which is the, the uh, length of the, um, half the length of the major axis, and then the B value and the C value. We talked about the fact that it kind of works as a um, as the uh, Pythagorean theorem, except it, all the letters are all confused. So it's b squared plus c squared equals a squared, and that's what we're going to use here right now. So let me go down to our problem. So b squared, so how far apart are they? Well, to find that out, we need to find the value for c, and finding the value for c, we can double that to find the answer. All right? So b squared plus c squared equals a squared. And b squared we know is, because I'm dealing with these inches, now I'm wondering if I should have done that, but that's okay, we're tough, is 81 squared plus c squared, we'll figure that out in a minute, is equal to um, 284 squared. Let me get that down. 284 quantity squared. All right, and so with a little bit of mathematics, c squared is equal to 284 squared minus 81 squared. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can use Desmos to help me out. And we've got 284 squared minus 81 squared. Take the square root of that and I get C to be 272.2 approximately. Let's do that. 272.2 inches. That's our C value. Let me go back to our other screen. So C because I took the square root of this, is equal to 272.2. Remember, to go from C to C, we've got to, you know, from C to C, this value of C has to be doubled in order for me to find the distance between the two. 
So I'm going to do 272.2 times 2, which gives me 544 inch, 544 inches. Or if we want to look at it in terms of feet, we get approximately 45.4 feet for the distance. All right. Okay. So you've been like really dealing with a lot of information and I applaud you, but we've got more. So sometimes these ellipses are not actually centered at the origin like we've been discussing. But the cool thing is it's going to look a lot like what the circle looks like. When we, ha when we move the center, the center is going to be um, on the axis, on both of the axes, but it'll be at the point HK. And when it's, this is, the orientation is like this, when we have the, um, ellipse where the major axis is horizontal. And then when we have an, an ellipse where the major axis is vertical, this is what our situation will be. Our Y minus K will be in the front. So it'll be kind of a K and an H situation. All right. So I think the best way to do this, I do think that you should, you know, hold on to these concepts, but the best way to do this is to really look at some examples. So let's go ahead and check on this one. It says find the coordinates of the center and the foci and the length of the major axis, the minor axis of, of the ellipse with this particular equation. Okay, so one great thing we can do is use what, whichever example we have up here. We notice that the a value, the longest or the largest value, the a squared value is under x. So we know we're dealing with a horizontal situation. Notice that there's no minus h or minus k, right? Because technically that's zero since it's just x squared and y squared. So we know that the center is, this center is at zero, zero. It's at the origin. And the next thing we need to do is, so we found the center. We need to find the foci. We remember they have that relationship b squared plus a squared is, oh no, b squared plus c squared, sorry about that, is equal to a squared. We just use that formula. So we'll use that again to find some information that we need. So a, let's go ahead and write that down. The a value has to be the square root of that 16. So a value is 4. The b value has to be the square root of that term, which is 2. So I've got a and b, and with a and b, I can calculate c. So that's going to give me the, the uh, distance of the foci, or the distance of the foci from the center. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So I have 2 squared plus c squared equals 4 squared. So 4 plus c squared is equal to 16. With a little bit of math, I can see that c squared is equal to a little bit of algebra, I can see that c squared is equal to uh, 12, and therefore c is equal to the square root of 12. And we can simplify that by writing that as 4 times 3, or 2 root 3, if you remember simplification of radicals. I took the liberty of drawing just really a quick sketch of what we know so far. So remember, we know that this is a horizontal, um, horizontal oriented ellipse. We've got two, two, four for the, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we've got, sorry about that. We've got the minor axis, axis being length four and the major axis being length eight. Remembering that we're taking the square root of four, doubling it, square root of 16 and doubling that. Now we need to figure out where to put these values, the, the C values or the foci. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's going to be at the square root of 12, which is 2 root 3, but that kind of doesn't help us place it. So we know that the square root of 12 has to be between 3 and 4, because the square root of 9 would be 3 and the square root of 16 would be 4. So I know my value is going to be somewhere between 1, 2, 3, and 4. So my my C value is going to be here. I'm just approximating it. But the exact value here, since it's 2 root 3 from the origin, the exact point is going to be 2 root 3, let me write it like that, 0. And this other foci will be 2 root 3, negative 2 root 3, 0. Does that make sense? Do you see how we got those? Let me highlight that a little bit so you can kind of see what we're talking about. So these foci 
that I've highlighted here in green really come out from the value of C, the fact that we're at the origin. We know that we can just add or subtract from this um, from this X point, the X point or the X coordinate of the center. All right, I know this is some heavy stuff, but you're doing a great job if you're following along. If not, stop, take a moment and just chit chat with me, see if you can get up with me or rewatch the video, try. So here's what we have. We've got all the information we need. We found the coordinates of the center, zero, zero, and the foci given here and the lengths of the major and the minor axis of the ellipse. And that was easy because we can find it here. So let me write it down plainly. The length of the major axis length is going to be eight units. And then the minor axis length is going to be four units. Okay. So we have all the information we were asked for. Example four, graph an equation not in standard form. So find the equation, the uh, coordinates of the center of the fo and the foci and the lengths of the major axis and the minor and uh, axis of the ellipse with this following equation. Then we're going to graph the ellipse. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. So like last time, we're going to take this equation, but we're going to organize it so that we're moving all the x terms together and then we're going to move all the y terms together. And because this is not a circle, we're going to have a slightly different approach. So let me move the C term over to the other side. So I want you to see what I did there. I felt like I talked a whole lot through that, so I'm not sure if you saw how I manipulated the situation. But this is very similar to what we did with the um, circle equation. So what we're going to do is kind of a completing the square thing. We're going to leave ourselves some space. Right, and 4y squared minus 24y is equal to negative 24. So all I'm doing is, you know, putting things down so I have a little bit of space. To complete the square here, I've got to do, um, let me not even do that. To complete the square here, I'm going to add 4 to the mix. Let's add a bright 4 like that. And if I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other. This side is a little tricky, though. Dealing with this is going to be hard, so I need you to peek this because this is different. You're going to first factor out the 4 out of these two terms. So you end up with y squared minus 6y like that. Same thing, but a little bit different. We're going to complete the square here. Okay. So when I do that, I'm going to cut this b term in half and I'm going to square it. And when I do that, I get 9, right? So before I quicken in a hurry, go and add a 9 over to this side, I need to confirm the fact that, is that what I added over here? Did I add a 9? No, I added a 4 times a 9. So really, I added a 36. So this is how we're going to balance out this equation. So watch what happens. I know this is a little weird, but check it out. We're going to factor this guy and write it as it's um, a, a perfect squared situation. So it's x plus 2 quantity squared squaring that binomial. Here, we're going to write 4, right? And then we're going to factor this part. So we get y plus, nope, not plus, but minus 3 quantity squared. And that's equal to, and when I finish with this whole thing, negative 24 plus 4 is going to be a negative 20. Then I'm going to get a positive um, 16 over here when I add the negative 20 plus the 36. And so now I'm almost home the, the fact is this does not look like any kind of equation that we've dealt with before, right? This doesn't look like anything. It's not a circle. It's not an ellipse. The final thing we do is we make, we take this coefficient. No, 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 not this coefficient. We take this answer because you remember, you remember the equation is supposed to look like this, where the answer is equal to one. So we're not going to divide by the four like I was about to mistakenly say. We're going to divide by the 16, but what you do to one side, you got to do to the other. What you do to one term, you got to do to the others. So our equation now is x plus 2 quantity squared over 16 plus y minus 3 quantity squared over 16 is equal to 1. Actually, that 16 I'm going to have to change to a 4 because it's really 4 over 16, which reduces to 1 over 4. With that in mind, we can get all the other information. The center is at negative 2, 3, and I'm not going to rush it because I've got to explain this to you. Very short video coming up next. Yes, there's a part 3, I'm sorry, 
but we'll talk about it very, very soon.